G'day everyone, and welcome back to the channel. The learning curve that new players face with flight simulators can be especially steep, and War Thunder is no exception to that if you want to try your hand in simulator battles. So today we're going to go over my top 10 tips for new sim players. Now a full disclaimer here, these are my tips and therefore they are based off my opinions, so some people may have a slightly different way of doing things and that's fine. Just find what works best for you. That aside, I hope you find these tips useful, and if you do, feel free to drop a like on the video. Now, let's get stuck into it. Tip number one, set up your trimming. If you fly your aircraft in a straight line and let go of the stick, what happens? It will probably want to roll, pitch, or yaw in a certain direction, making it impossible for you to keep the aircraft level without constantly making corrections. Aircraft trimming can help with this. First of all, make sure you have key bindings for setting the trim, resetting the trim, and trim fixation, as shown here in the control menu. To set the trim of your aircraft, you need to get your aircraft to a stable altitude and airspeed where it will be doing most of its work. So for me, in the Spitfire here, I have chosen an altitude of 1000 meters and an airspeed between 350 and 450 kilometers an hour. To trim the aircraft, I need to use the stick and hold the aircraft as level as possible. I then press the set trim button and it will tell me how my control services have been set. After this, there may be an improvement, but you may need to trim your aircraft a few more times until you're happy with the trim settings. Not all aircraft can be trimmed the same way. Some aircraft only have rudder and elevator trim settings, but no aileron settings. And some aircraft will require far more trimming than others. So you'll find a Mustang will need significantly less trim adjustments than, say, a Spitfire. And some fighters have very limited trim settings indeed. Now bombers, by their nature, tend to have the most trim options available, as they are large, heavy aircraft that need to be kept as stable as possible for the bombardier. Now trimming fixation allows you to save the trim setup for a particular aircraft. To set trim fixation, you need to go into test flight mode, trim up your aircraft as neatly as possible, and then when you are happy with your trim, you simply press the button you have assigned for trim fixation. This saves your trim setting so that whenever you fly out in a sim game, your aircraft will be trimmed to these settings. It is very, very useful, especially for aircraft that need a lot of trimming like the Spitfire. If you have trim fixation set up, it means you don't need to manually trim your aircraft to the desired settings every time you load into a game, as the aircraft will already be set to the trim it was at when you trimmed it back in test flight. Helpful, right? Tip number two, gun convergence. As a rule, I never ever have my gun convergence set to anything higher than about 500 meters. Usually I have it set between 300 and 400 meters. In simulator battles, much like in real life, it is very rare that you would ever be engaging aircraft at a range of more than 500 meters. That is half a kilometer away after all. Most engagements are settled at ranges below 350 meters, so that's where you want your convergence to be, especially for aircraft with wing-mounted guns where convergence is the most critical. As a general rule, aircraft with central-mounted weaponry like the BF-109 or the Yak will be far more effective in head-on engagements or tail fighting where the enemy presents a much smaller target, whereas aircraft with wing-mounted weaponry like Hurricanes, Spitfires, Mustangs, um, certain Japanese aircraft, they will be more effective at landing deflection shots due to the higher surface area and weapon spread. Now a quick note here for wing-mounted weapons, if you are looking to land your shots on the center of mass, and you are not sure of your exact distance to target, try aiming at the base of the wing on one side of your opponent's aircraft. This will usually allow at least one bank of your guns to be aiming at the central part of the opposing fuselage. When setting up your convergence, it is important to consider whether it's appropriate to enable vertical targeting. Uh, this will compensate your shell drop for the set convergence distance. A word of caution, this does increase accuracy when shooting in a straight line, however it can sometimes make it harder to pull off deflection shots. This setting is more suited to aircraft where you're shooting at a straight line in your convergence range, for example if you're hunting bombers in something like an Air Cobra or a Fokker Wolf 190. Tip 3. Always maintain situational awareness. 
It seems pretty simple, but a lot of people still get caught out because they didn't check their surroundings. Always check your 6 o'clock every 5 to 10 seconds. If you're at low altitude, this is even more important, as an enemy could dive on you from the heavens and you'd be none the wiser unless you kept an eye on the sky. Situational awareness isn't just about watching your tail. You need to keep an eye on the battle in general. Uh, check the kill feed to see if anyone is going for ground units, bombers or surveillance aircraft. This will give you a good indication of their location as these objectives are marked on the map. The reverse applies as well. If you are blowing up tanks and pillboxes, that will draw the enemy's attention to your area, so you'd better be prepared for it. Blow up a couple of ground targets and then pull up to a higher altitude to check if anything hostile is coming your way. If you've attracted the enemy, you are at least now in a more defendable position, and if nobody has noticed your pillbox popping, then you can simply dive back down and resume the fun. Tip 4. Keep your altitude. Altitude is your friend keep it. The only time you should be low to the ground is if you're attacking ground targets or coming in to land at your airfield. Altitude equals energy, and energy is everything. Having the energy advantage means you get to decide how, when, or even if you're going to engage your opponent. You'll be able to spot incoming threats or opportunities with far greater ease from 15,000 feet than you would at 1,500 feet. Altitude also provides you with a safety net when attacking. If you miss your initial shots in a dive, you will have the energy to pull up to a safe altitude again before your enemy gets a chance to engage you. Don't let frustration get the better of you if you do miss your shots. It's always tempting to follow your opponent into a turn and get that nice deflection shot, but you will be bleeding speed and energy when you do this, and it can leave you vulnerable to attack from your opponent's wingmen, or even your opponent themselves if they manage to outmaneuver you and then gain the advantage. The only time I break this rule is if I'm confident of two things. One, my opponent is alone and without backup. Two, I am in an aircraft that is the superior turn fighter. Otherwise, I'd be heading straight up to regain that precious altitude, and so should you. Tip number five, look after your aircraft and know when to retreat. Sometimes things won't go your way, and it's important to learn when to cut and run if things get messy. If you suffer damage to your engine, oil, or cooling systems, you should seriously consider breaking from your engagement and returning to your airfield for immediate repairs. My reasons for this are twofold. Reason one, if you take critical damage to your engine or cooling system, it will fail eventually. This could happen within a minute, or it could happen after 10 minutes. Either way, your aircraft is running on borrowed time. Your aim should always to be to preserve your aircraft and thus deny a kill to your opponent, and you'll be doing a poor job of that flying several miles behind enemy lines with no oil or coolant left in your engine. Reason number two is the reward system. You will only get the full Silver Lion reward for your flyout if you manage to successfully land back at your airfield. This applies for both bombing bases, or getting ground kills, or air kills. The difference in rewards can be quite large, and if you don't look after your plane, then you're simply throwing your hard-earned silver lines out the window. Tip number six, use your radio messages. Radio messages are a key part of communication in simulator battles. Use them. At a bare minimum, you should be using the following. Follow me. Most pilots use this to mark their position on the map. It can also be used when you are chasing a unidentified aircraft. More often than not, if it's a friendly, they will see your ping on the map right behind them and also signal their position in the same way so that you know not to shoot them out the sky. Cover me. Speaks for itself. It's calling for help. It also marks your grid marker and altitude for your friendlies to see. Returning to base. Um, I don't think enough people use this, but I use it a lot. It lets your allies know that you're heading back to base, and basically can't be relied on for immediate assistance. And finally, thank you. Manners are important, so if somebody has just saved your ass, it's only common courtesy to say thank you for the favour. Tip number seven, utilise the replay system. The replay system is a valuable tool. Unfortunately, its true value is often overlooked by many. 
Uh, a lot of people will use the replay system to record epic videos of their amazing dogfights where you see them slapping multiple enemies out of the sky with barely a scratch on them. That's all well and good, but if you want to improve your skills as a pilot, you should spend more time looking at your replays where things are going wrong, rather than when things are going right. Do you ever have a game where you feel like you're doing all of the correct things, but your opponent still manages to outfly and outfight you? Go and check the replay. Looking back on the match with a clear head and the ability to view it from any perspective can give you some real insights. Uh, perhaps you overlooked something that you shouldn't have. Perhaps your opponent is better with the flight maneuvers, or conversely, perhaps you used the wrong maneuver at the wrong time. When I was still new to sim, I spent a lot of time looking over the replays, especially when I was flying in a match where some of War Thunder's top sim players made an appearance. Uh, watching how they fly was a gold mine of information for me, and I learned a lot from watching them. So I encourage you to do the same. You may be surprised by what you find. Tip 8. Find others to fly with. Being a lone eagle in the sky can be fun, but when you're new it can make for a very difficult and frustrating experience. In general, it's always better to fly out with a friend or two, or three, or five, or how many you can cram into a game. Uh, nine times out of ten, a group of pilots will always have more success if they fly out and communicate as a team, compared to going it alone. Uh, voice communication obviously makes this even easier, so make good use of Discord, TeamSpeak, or whatever platform you tend to use, though I have found Discord to be the most popular for the sim community at the moment. Flying out with a group of people is not only a lot of fun, but it can also be a valuable learning experience as well. If you're lucky enough to fly out with somebody who has a wealth of experience under their belt, be sure to observe them, ask questions, and take note of when they decide to engage their opponents. You'll find the vast majority of us here are very open and friendly, and we were all new to this at one point as well, so, you know, I'm always happy to answer any questions you have, so feel free to drop a comment if there is anything you want covered. Don't be afraid to call out for help during a game either. If you're struggling with something, usually somebody will be happy to help you out. Tip number 9. Have a varied lineup. Variety is the spice of life, and for Sim, it is no different. You'll want a lineup that has a variety of aircraft at varying battle ratings, and I will explain why. As I explained in my introduction to sim tutorial, there is a spawn point system in enduring confrontation games, and this is based off battle ratings. Certain aircraft will have a spawn point cost, and if you die in that aircraft you will also then need to wait a certain amount of time before the game allows you to spawn in it again. For example, you're in a tier 3 game, so the battle rating spread is 3.7 to 4.7, and you've brought a bunch of fighters, three of which sit at the same battle rating of 4.7. If you get shot down in any one of these fighters, not only will you have to wait 30 minutes to respawn in it again, but the other two aircraft at that same BR are also going to be locked behind the timer because they are an aircraft of the same type. The same goes for bombers and attackers, which is why it's really important to bring a varied lineup. That way you'll always usually have something to fly out that isn't sitting at the minimum BR for your game. Now there's nothing wrong with flying out with the minimum BR stuff, but you will be at a disadvantage in the mid to late game where other players have a harder hitting and faster aircraft. This is especially relevant to top tier games. Please bring a varied lineup. You don't want to be stuck in a game with nothing but subsonics when you're being clubbed by MiG-21s. Trust me, it ain't fun. My final tip is by far the most important, and it applies to both new and veteran players alike. Don't take things too seriously, and have fun. We can easily fall into the trap of obsession where we feel like there is always going to be someone better out there, and we'll obsess over our mistakes, we'll stop playing certain aircraft or nations because we feel they're not good enough, and then all of a sudden, poof, the magic is gone, and you're not having fun anymore. And at the end of the day, you're playing this game to have fun, so just do it. Take a break from those lineups that are, anno that are annoying you. Do something meme -y. Take the duck out for an entire match. It, it, it is a laugh. I've done it. It's fun. Um, call up your friends and take out a squad of Sunderlands. Do whatever it is that puts a smile on your face and reminds you why you got into air simulators in the first place. The game can be frustrating, so keeping yourself in that fun headspace is not only going to be good for your skills, 
but good for your mental well-being as well. Now if you found this video helpful, please feel free to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel, as I plan to make more informative videos like this moving forward. But that my friends concludes my top 10 tips for beginners, so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.